Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I just want to start off... You know, we live in trying and cynical times. But before we begin, I just want to start off by saying I believe in democracy. I believe in our constitutional government. I believe in the separation of powers. And I wish the Supreme Court felt the same way. <laughs> because the Supreme Court of the United States, or SCOTUS, continues to shoot itself in the nuts, or SCROTUS. <laughs> they have been. These, these, these folks in the black robes. They've been racked with scandals over the past few years, including Clarence Thomas's wife promoting the coup on January 6th, and Clarence Thomas himself, Clarence Thomas himself accepting luxury vacations from the guy who owns Hitler's napkins. <laughs> and now there is a brand new scandal involving Supreme Court justice and lifeguard watching you drown, Samuel Alito. <laughs> right now, there are multiple cases that could be decided by the Supreme Court involving Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, which is why it was particularly disturbing this weekend we found out that in January of 2021, just days after the Capitol riot, an upside-down U.S. flag flew at the home of Justice Samuel Alito. And that... And that is significant because at that time, the upside-down flag had become a symbol of the Stop the Steal movement. Even worse, all of Alito's garden gnomes were fully QAnon. <laughs> now... And when it comes to January 6th cases argued before the court, Alito has been highly sympathetic to the mob. That's like when your couple's therapist is wearing a shirt that says, Team David. <laughs> There's no possible justification for a Supreme Court justice displaying a symbol of insurrection at his home, which is why when this photo was published, Alito immediately did the right thing, owned up and blamed his wife, saying in a statement that he had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of the flag. And it was briefly placed by his wife, Martha Ann. So he dropped a dime on his gal, <laughs> citing the landmark case of me just trying to live my life, V ladies be crazy, am I right? <laughs> 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 Alito excused his wife's desecration of the flag that our forefathers died for at Iwo Jima because he says she only did it because a neighbor displayed a <laughs> Trump sign on their lawn. And when Mrs. Alito confronted the neighbor about it, they say the neighbor addressed his wife using vulgar language, including the C word. Okay, that is not nice. But if someone calls you the C word, putting up an insurrection flag, it's not the response. <laughs> oh. You were rude to my wife? Well, we're Nazis now. <laughs> so, are you happy? <laughs> so, Martha Ann. Martha Ann runs up uh, the January 6th flag, and then Sam comes home from work, sees it, and is like, Honey, I understand you're upset, but we have to take that down immediately. For Pete's sake, I'm a justice of the Supreme Court. Is what would have been nice to have happened. <laughs> But instead, neighbors confirmed that the display stood for several days before being taken down. So Alito clearly knew about this because he came and went for several days. And to paraphrase my favorite Spangled Banner, the flag was still there. <laughs> do, I, do I do it upside down? How do I, do I wear my hat backwards? Now dig this, daddy-o. The court has repeatedly warned its own employees against public displays of partisan views, but that doesn't affect Alito because the Supreme Court serves as an arbiter of its own behavior. So different rules apply to the justices and to their staff. Why? I wouldn't want to go to a restaurant with a sign that says, employees must wash hands, but manager can pee in your soup. <laughs> anyway. Fair point was still there, bum, bum, oh, say. So that's the jokes on that story. And by the way, if you didn't like those jokes, they were my wife's idea. <laughs> I just came home and the jokes were there. <laughs> I had nothing to do with those jokes. <laughs> this weekend, oh, Trump hit the campaign trail. On Friday, he swung by a Republican fundraiser up in Minnesota where he had a new condition for his debates with Joe Biden. I just want to debate this guy, but, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to demand a drug test, too, by the way. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, but Trump and Biden are two very old men. Of course they're on drugs. <laughs> you test any guy their age and you get positives for Lipitor, Metoprolol, Flomax, and Werther's Original. <laughs> and do you really... Uh, uh -huh. Do you really want to delay the debate waiting for two old men to pee? <laughs> We've only got till November. <laughs> oh, Trump also took a, a shot at Biden's signature issue, shrinkflation. I said, anybody have any Tic Tacs? And the guy said, yeah, I have one. Look at the size of that sucker. Can you, can you see that, Pete? This is called Biden Tic Tacs. This, those are Biden Tic Tacs, and this, see this, this is shocking. This is called Biden Car, right there. That's Biden Car, right there. Look what he did, look what he did to Detroit. This is, Bi and look, and look, and look what he did to men. This is Biden Man, look at Biden Man. Can't even fit in Biden Car. Head come, body comes off, it's all possessed by devil head. Possessed by a devil. <laughs> then, on Saturday, Trump spoke at the NRA's annual meeting where he played a piece of instrumental stock music that has become a QAnon anthem. And when the music played, he paused for, and I'm running down here, forever. Together they help make America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. nation in decline. We are a failing nation. Nothing like pausing forever under scary music and then saying the <laughs> saddest possible sentence. Okay, kids, come on here. Daddy needs to talk to you. I'm leaving your mom for your preschool teacher. <laughs> While Trump was... Bananas. <laughs> While Trump was out on the, uh, the campaign trail, uh, one of his best buds was holding the fort down in Palm Beach. Former Trump lawyer and gremlin... <laughs> and gremlin who gets your baby unless you can guess his name. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani. This weekend, Rudy was celebrating his 80th birthday in Florida when Arizona prosecutors served him indictment papers at his own party. There you go. Wow. Wow. There you go. All right. Rudy must have been shocked, given that just an hour and 14 minutes earlier, he tweeted, if Arizona authorities can't find me by tomorrow morning, one, they must dismiss the indictment, two, they must concede they can't count votes. Woo-hoo! That was the worst time social media post since Jesus tweeted, enjoying some delicious hummus at the first of many suppers with the most loyal apostles in the game. But you and me, back to back. But an indictment isn't the only gift Rudy's getting. He also set up an 80th birthday Amazon gift registry. <laughs> It was either at Amazon or Crate and I Live in a Barrel. <laughs> so what do you get the guy who drank everything? Well, reportedly he asked for LED chandeliers, a flat screen TV, and a podcasting mic, plus stain blocking ceiling paint. <laughs> it's hard to imagine why Rudy has stains on a ceiling because there are so many options. <laughs> I'm gonna say post Franzia poop cart wheel. Rudy was really hoping for a nice birthday check uh, because he's $148 million in debt, which is why he recently launched a new grift, 
Rudy Coffee. You know their slogan, fresh from the scalp. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Sarah Paulson and comedian Paul Shear. And when we come back, we go behind the scenes in Donald Trump's trial. Join us, Lizzie. <laughs> 